Hello, we just did this problem. Um, we found out how to find the... We found the uh, coefficient of static friction, right? That was this right here. Um, coefficient of static friction. That was this. So I'm going to put this out in the corner. And we're going to remember that that's the... Whoops. Coefficient of static friction. Whoops. The coefficient of static friction. Um, and now I'm actually going to take the same problem, and I'm going to tell you that it's, uh... I'm going to tell you that it's, um, it's accelerating. In, uh, in some direction. Actually, screw it, I'm going to delete, delete that. So now I'm going to say, okay, now this is accelerating in some direction. So, uh, exciting stuff. So now we want to find, if this, say this is accelerating... I think I found a, I thought of a good way to show that something that um I for a while I was trying to think of a way to show a good way um to express movement without um con without making it look like a a force and hopefully that kind of demonstrates it right there. This is accelerating at a rate of well, let's say three meters per second squared. Or meters per second per second. I'm gonna write out meters per second per second, right? So that's how much that's accelerating. Or three meters per second squared. Let's go through and label all our forces. And this is our force of friction, right? And that's just equal to the coefficient of, of friction. Remember, since this block is moving, we're, we're going to say that it's, it's moving, um, then we're going to be using the coefficient of kinetic friction. So it's UK, right? But I'm just going to say the coefficient of friction times the force normal, the normal force Fn, which is the amount of the weight that's pushing into the ramp. Um, and that normal force goes right about here, right? That's the normal force. And what's that equal to? Uh, how do we get the normal force? Well, we just... Oops. We just kind of solve this triangle right here. We get the normal force is, uh, is equal to... Let me adjust this. Uh, we get that the normal force is equal to... Well, if this is the angle and you turn your head way sideways and make this the horizontal, it's kind of like the length of that triangle. Or, you, in, the, in other words, you could kind of view it as, um, you could just say it's a, the adjacent over the hypotenuse times the hypotenuse. So it's going to be that 10 cosine of the angle, so 10 cosine of 20. Right? Hopefully you should be getting a bit used to, uh, used to these kind of things now, because, I mean, we've done them a lot. So that's equal to, we'll take 20, take the cosine, times 10, blah, blah, blah. Very, very similar to what we did last time. We get 9 point, uh, about 9.40. So 9.4, I'm going to write. And that's in Newtons, obviously, because it's a force. And then what's, uh, what's this right here? Oh, oh, by the way, this normal force, this is how much the ramp is pushing up, so that way the weight of the block doesn't push back through the ramp. So these are equal and opposite, right? This this line right here and this line right here are supposed to be equal. Uh, and they're in, clearly in the opposite directions. Uh, and then what is this force? Well, this is the uh, force applied, right? This is the applied force. And this is going to be equal to, well, what's this component? This component is, uh, where are we? Oh. Yeah, so it's the opposite of the hypotenuse, it's the height of this triangle if this is the bottom. So if this is the bottom of the triangle, then this is the height. So that's um, 10 sine of 20. Hopefully that makes sense. If not, review my, uh, review my trig functions video. Uh, and that's just going to be equal to handy dandy calculator. 20, take the sine of it, times 10 is equal to, we get 3.42, and it's going to do 3.4 because that's what I did here. 3.4, uh, and that's our applied force. So what's our total acceleration right here? 
Um, because you figure this has some initial acceleration, right? Well, this actually comes, it becomes a bit of a pain, but it's really not too bad. Um, first off, let's figure out, okay, if the weight is equal to 10 newtons, what is the mass? Well, the weight is going to be equal to the mass times gravity, right? Or the mass times 9.8. So that means that if we take the weight and divide it by, or the weight, which in this case is 10 newtons, so if we take the 10 newtons and we divide that by 9.8, we get the mass. And our mass is equal to, let's see, we've got 10 divided by 9.8 equals uh, 1.02. So we've got a mass of 1.02. So pretty close to 1, not quite. Okay, so that's our mass. So let's look at the uh, this accelerate this combination of the acceleration, the yellow acceleration, and the blue um, force that's being applied by gravity. Okay, so it's got the initial acceleration there, uh, or rather, it's it is accelerating. It's not an initial. It's accelerating. I'm sorry. Um, when you put the block on this ramp, it accelerates at 3 meters per second squared, or 3 meters per second per second. Um, so what does that mean? Well, that means that when you take this force right here that's pulling downwards, and when you counteract that with this force that's pulling it back up the ramp, what's left over accelerates the block at this 3 meters per second per second, or this 3 meters per second squared. So we get that the applied force, or the force that is being is moving it d down the ramp, minus the upward force, because remember they're in opposite directions. So minus the that force of friction right there. Whoops, the force of friction is going to be what's left over. It's going to be that sum of the forces, which well yeah it looks like the difference of the forces right because we're doing minus. But remember, the force of friction is acting in the opposite direction, so it's kind of like a negative. So that's the sum of the forces. And Newton's law, all that, says that force equals mass times acceleration. Well, we just figured out the mass, right? That's the 1.02. And uh, we know the acceleration, so now we can figure out what, uh, this, what this force is. Or rather, um, what the difference of these forces is. Because... We're going to say that this is, this is really the sum of the forces, right? Sum of forces. Because it's, it's what the overall force is acting on the block. So that's equal to mass times acceleration. Um, and we get equal for that. We get that it's equal to, well, our mass is 1.02 times, our acceleration is 3 meters per second squared, or 3 meters per second per second. So times 3 equals 3.06. So 3.06, and that's going to be in newtons, right? Because that's a force, forces are measured in newtons. So now, I mean, that, that was the sum of the forces that we just figured out. Um, because it's what actually ends up happening to the block. It's the end result. It's the final, it's the result, resultant force. Hopefully that's kind of making sense to you. Um, so we figured out that the force of, the applied force minus the force of friction is equal to this 3.06 newtons. I'm just going to write 3.06. Now, we know what the applied force is, right? Yeah. We know that it's uh, this 3.4. So we get 3.4 mi uh, minus force of friction equals 3.06. Oh dear, significant digits. I'm ignoring them. Um, so we're going to just say then um, force is equal to the force of friction is going to be equal to a negative uh, or no, it's just going to be equal to oh, this is interesting. If we take that um, 3.06 and we subtract uh, 3.4, we get negative um, 0.34. But this was a negative to begin with, so this is just going to be 0.34. And honestly, the sign doesn't really matter as long as you remember that it's going in this direction. So the force of friction is 0.34. 
and um, am I doing this right? Yes, I'm doing this right. Actually, how about we make this just that way we get a, a little bit more of a sensible number. We're going to make this 0.3 meters per second. So this is going to be um, where am I? Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna redo this part. Uh, the sum of the sum of the forces is going to be 0.3. So for here we're going to get the sum of the forces is going to be equal to mass times acceleration. Our mass is 10. Or no, our mass is 1.02. 1.02 times our acceleration is 0.3. So times 0.3. This will just give us uh, more sensible numbers. So we got 0 0.306. So same kind of thing. Just I, I'm sorry, I changed that because um, I think it'll just make our numbers a little bit neater. Um, so we got 0 0.306, and again, that's in newtons. Um, so we just figured out that right. The we just took this and we found what the sum of the forces was. So we know that the applied force minus the frictional force or basically the force that's actually moving the block once everything cancels out is equal to 0 0.306 newtons. Uh, but we know the applied force, right? That's just this. That's how much the gravity is pulling the block down the ramp. So we get that 3.4 uh, minus the force of friction equals 0 0.306 newtons. Okay, so 0 0.306 newtons. I'm gonna stop writing the newtons action. I'm just gonna put the numbers in. So now basic algebra. We subtract uh, 3.4 from both sides, and we get negative. The negative of the force of friction is equal to. Well, let's take out our calculator. 0 0.306. Let's put this right here. Minus 3.4 equals negative 3.1 basically. So negative 3.1. Okay, and I mean, if this one's negative and this one's negative, we can basically just get rid of the negative signs, right? I mean, because the negatives cancel out. So we get that the force of friction equals 3.1, and that's in this direction. you got to remember that. How else can we f could we have figured out the force of friction? Or what else is the force of friction? Well, that's just equal to, it's, it's our, um, our coefficient of friction times the force, the normal force. Or the difficult, uh, or basically the ratio of how difficult it is to slide it, times the, um, the force that's actually pushing, um, the two surfaces together, right? So it's the resistance between the two surfaces times the force that's pushing them together. And we know that, we just found that the force of friction is 3.1, and that's equal to whatever the constant of friction is, times, well, our normal force, however much gravity is pulling the two surfaces together. So that's the normal force, that's 9.4. How do we solve for u? Uh, well, we divide everything by that 9.4, and if we take 3.1 and divide it by 9.4, our final answer, our coefficient of friction, is uh, about 0.33. So 0.33. And that is our answer right there. So that since it's, uh, again, since it's moving, that's our um, coefficient of uh, static friction. Or, I'm sorry, I keep messing these up. It's the coefficient of kinetic friction. So, that's mu, ah, crap, line tool. Go die. Coefficient of friction, mu, and, it, uh, and that's k, and it should be down here kinetic friction, right? This is, I'm sorry, again, handwriting. Can't wait to get that tablet. So the coefficient of kinetic friction is what we just solved for. It's that 0.33. So hopefully these past couple examples have uh, helped you. I know a lot of people have had a lot of trouble with these inclined pl plane problems, and I just want to make them super clear, because this is what the entire tests are going to, the entire test is going to be like. Um, let me know if you had any problems, or, uh, if it helped. I love hearing, um, that certain things help. Just today, someone told me that my, uh, my trig functions video actually helped them, and that it made me feel really good, and it made me want to go home and make a bunch more videos. So, let me know if anything works. Let me know 
if I'm actually helping you or if I'm just ranting and confusing you. Um, uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do next. I'm probably going to uh, actually remake some of the old videos. I don't know. Uh, I'll, I'll figure out what I'm going to do, but uh, I'll see you then.